Hey everybody, um, and everybody out in webland or whatever. Uh, my name is Dave Kamides. We're going to start this in a second officially. Um, this is unofficial right now uh, because we're going to be doing a podcast. And um, I have a podcast called The Op. Website is theop.io. Hopefully you've seen it. If you like it, please like it on Apple and whatever. Um, so I'm going to be talking to Gary and Matt, and we're going to record it. I'm going to do an official start in a second, but I just wanted to give you the sort of lay of the land. Um, can you do me a favor, and uh, when I introduce them, can you show me right now how loud you can be? <laughs> um, if you could sound like 2,000 more people, that would be great, but that was really good. So, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to introduce them, and then I'm going to go like this, and you guys can do exactly what you just did. Um, is this, this volume okay? Yeah. Cool. Even more, you want me closer? That? No, this is okay? Okay, good. <clears throat> All right, I think we're ready to go. Good? <clears throat> Usually I have to do this part three or four times, so I apologize. I'm not very good at this. <clears throat> you want to do it? No. <laughs> By the way, if we say something stupid or funny, you can laugh. <laughs> um, you can throw things, you can do whatever you want. The more fun we're having, the better this is. <clears throat> uh, and where am I? I'm Cine City Studios, Chicago. Could they have a more, like, a rougher name to say <clears throat> out loud? Um, okay. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Op Podcast. My name is Dave Kamides, and I am your host. And I'm really excited uh, coming to you from Chicago, from Cinecity Studios, Chicago, where I am attending and we're recording this live at uh, Filmscape Chicago. Um, Filmscape Chicago. Films Filmscape Chicago brings together filmmakers, artists, technicians, and students for networking, education, and training in free classes and on their trade show floor, which we're having here this weekend. Uh, really excited to be here in front of an audience and actually streaming on the web and all that good stuff. Um, and today we're going to do something a little different. I've got two people on the show. Um, we are going to be talking to Gary Maloof, who is the operator on The Bear. Usually when you listen to this podcast, you hear me say all the things that they've worked on, but the truth of the matter is the only thing I need to say is the bear because the work that these guys do is so incredible. Um, and Matt Rosick, who is the, the key first AC on the bear um, also. Uh, guys, thanks for being here. Thanks, thanks for having us. Yeah. <laughs> There's like people lined up outside the door to come in here. This is fantastic. Um, it's a lie. So the, I'm really excited to do this because I don't, like, do people know about the bear? I, like, it seems like nobody knows about this show. Like, it's great yeah. giving it some some prop. I think some people have seen it. Okay. <laughs> Has anybody in the audience ever seen the bear? Okay. <laughs> so another thing worth mentioning is the bear seems to be about Chicago. I think, if I'm correct, and it you is guys, set here. it's set here. Yeah. And, and you guys are local to Chicago, so that's um, one yeah. of the great things about this. Uh, so. Just to set the table, Gary and I have worked several times together. I've been more than blessed to work with him uh, as a, as a co-camera operator. And Matt and I just met, but I've heard about you through Gary. Um, so tell me about the bear. And by the way, will the bear itself ever come back? Because I, I'm, I was excited about Matt? that. That's a great question. <laughs> I don't know that even if I knew the answer, if I'd be allowed to tell. Oh, NDA. Yeah. Okay. No, no, no narcs. So, no narcs. So tell it, what, what's it like to work on a show like that? I mean, it's really, uh, it's a joy. And I mean, it's really, we're lucky. I mean, you know, because I, I know you know how many times have you worked on stuff that isn't great or no one cares about. Or, oh, everything I work on is great. unbelievable. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, I mean, just to have, just to be a part of something that people can connect with and we have fun making. I mean, you know, it's a dream come true. So. Yeah. I, I mean, I'd, I'd second that. It's, I mean, probably like one of the most enjoyable times I have going to work that I've, you know, that I've ever experienced, you know, it's, we're, we're lucky that we've got like, it's great material and the, the crew just as a whole really gels and gets along. So like, it's, it's a joy to like see people in the morning. That's the best. Yeah. Couldn't be better. And you guys both started on the pilot. Uh, no, you didn't do the pilot. I did right? not do the pilot. Yeah. Oh, just, so Matt, could you leave for like 20 minutes and then come back? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thanks. Matt will be, no. Um, so you came in on episode two then. Uh, yes. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah. I think that we did we re, did we reshot some stuff from the pilot, didn't we? I think we reshot one thing. Yeah. Yeah. Right. But I it mean, was I guess so. Technically, you I had a small hand one in the, scene. In the pilot, one but, scene in yeah. the pilot. Okay. So your yeah. fingerprints are in there. Yeah. Um, so Gary, then has has 
has the shooting of the show progressed from the pilot? I mean, I know there are detours where you do different things for story reasons, but is it is it progressed since the beginning? I think the energy has stayed the same. Okay. But I think that it definitely, you know, just as we went more and more down the line doing it and doing it together, you know, everything just got more and more efficient, streamlined, you know. Yeah. And I think just the story itself and all the actors and everybody just gets more and more comfortable. So, you know, I mean, that first pilot, was a blast, but it was definitely as chaotic as the pilot itself. Is there, I'd like to Yeah, say, well, I mean, we just, up. you know, you, you just only have so much time to do things, yeah. and we were working in practical locations. We had really, really that kitchen was really tiny in the pilot. And, so you was, know, the, was the pilot in an actual kitchen, and yeah. then you were on a set after that? Correct, yeah. So once this show got picked up, two season, or I mean, episode two, rather, we were on a stage. Okay. But the first day you know the first uh, episode was yeah the tiniest little like, it feels like it. yeah yeah <laughs> not the easiest corners and yeah. you know all that and then when they made the set they were nice to yeah, widen it out for it us yeah. and and i mean was was there a decision from the beginning like okay this is going to be handheld this is going to be run and this is going to be like how do you make those decisions you know i mean i didn't really have much to say in the beginning of it because you know they were kind of finding it so we did a lot of remote head stuff uh on the pilot and a lot of just dolly work and yeah. you know so there was no handheld in the pilot and then as it Wait, there was no handheld in the pilot none seriously nope wow yeah. I, I totally would I, I mean that's that actually says something because there's so much energy going on it's incredible yeah I was on uh, Mike Pennick who you know was my dolly grip yeah. and he uh, we were on a Cobra dolly on a Moses head for a lot of it and it was uh, there was a lot of um, us just you know, white knuckle on it because so Mike was slamming <laughs> into stuff, and you were in another room going, "Mike, are you okay? Are you okay?" No, I was definitely in the room. I'm <laughs> okay. I'm not. I'm not good enough to be that guy that's like in another county doing the wheels. Yeah. Not. I can't do. I don't know how anybody does. I don't know how he can do it half the time, even if he's just around the corner on focus. I are, need are to be there. Are you usually like out of line of sight because of what's going on? It kind of depends. Like, kind of depends where we are. Yeah. A lot of times, yeah. like if I can be, especially. Like when he's on the wheels, like if we're on the Ronin, I like to be kind of next to him just so we can, it's yes. easy to talk about stuff. I mean, like gotcha. we wear headsets and things, but I like to, Yeah, it's nice to be able to see him and to just be able to like lean over and, and say something, yeah. you know, if we need to. So, but I mean, I, I'm not opposed, especially like Thursdays and Fridays, like later in the day, I'm not opposed to being like <laughs> outside the set. Yeah, <laughs> close. Like you're you're in your car. Pulling, yeah, pulling he does generally way. stick pretty close to me. But there's a lot of times too where it's just like the nature of the shot or whatever. Yeah. Like you just can't. You know, he's got to yeah. hide. So since we're talking about you guys working together, one of the questions that I had was this. And I mean, I'm at a disadvantage because I'm seeing the cut, right? So I'm 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 guessing on a lot of stuff, obviously. But it seems to me like what is going on in that show is you have an amazing operator and an amazing focus puller, and you guys are making your own choices sometimes like it seems li like like i mean we talked about in the big one or in, in episode seven and season one which is amazing on both both of you did incredible work how there were choices on focus and there were choices on framing that like you know it, you're probably half the time or i'm asking you are, are you going oh gary gary's going for that or you'll go oh he's going there i'm gonna you know how yeah. does that work i think i mean especially like specifically for some of those oneers, like there's a there's a I mean, for sure, there's a framework. I mean, there there has to be for stuff like that. But I know that, like, on those, you know, we we sh went through them three, four, maybe five times. But, like, each time he'd do something a little bit different. And it was always, like, the first time through, it was always, like, okay, this is pretty much what we planned and what Follow we said we were going to do. And then the second time, Gary's, like... Oh, you know, I yeah, the last time I th I saw him going that way, and I was like, oh, that looks good, and so he'd follow him, and like, yeah, it's you know, I kind of watch, and that's why I mean, it's nice to be in view of him because I yeah. can see, you know, if he's starting to lean one way, and I'm like, okay, I think he's gonna go that way, okay, yeah. and so I mean, it kind of loosens up, sure. I think the more the more time that we have, which on this show isn't always a lot, like it's usually no. three takes is a lot. Like we joke that really our, our seconds like have forgotten all numbers above three. Yeah, I don't know how to write them anymore. That's pretty much yeah. how high the it goes. The slate doesn't go that high. It doesn't, yeah. <laughs> but Gary, are there are there times where you're, I mean, well, actually, uh, I, I know this from watching, and I mean, we were talking about, by the way, has everybody seen episode seven, which is the 17-minute wonder that Gary and Matt did? It's insane. And I'm not going to tell the whole story, but the first time that I met Gary before the show came out, he went, 
Yeah, actually, when it comes out, I did this handheld shot. It'd be kind of cool if you look at it. And I'm like, it's not just a handheld shot. It's incredible. <laughs> um, but there's a moment where, where two of the characters are, and Gary's across, uh, I forget the character's name. Uh, I call him cousin, but yeah, <laughs> Richie, Richie, yeah. and to some maybe to Sydney, I think. Yeah, and there's clearly focus choices going on with where you're going, and I'm wondering, was that Matt? Was did you discuss that? Was that definitely the Matt. That was definitely Matt. You're talking about when Sydney's telling him he's a loser. Yes, yeah. that's exactly right. Uh, that was definitely Matt, and I was like just kind of hanging in because it was, you know. Their heights are different, and you know how it is. And then, oh, yeah. and we're also in a oneer, so there's no cover. Yeah, he's like he's got to be. Yeah, like and he's a taller guy, and she's more yeah. normal sized. Yeah. And and you, well, and actually, as I remember, you're across him. I was across her. him, yeah. So I had to keep like a like a very like low angle up at him to hold yeah. his head height. Yeah. And then you know she was there yelling at him, and I think the first one you probably pulled maybe a couple times back and forth to yeah, him. I think but when she really started like getting into him and yelling at him and telling him that he's a loser and like she feels bad for his daughter because he's a loser and like really, really like hurtful yeah. stuff, he just decided to pull focus to Eben, who plays Richie, and never go back. And it's like, there's no, we didn't talk about it, I don't think, really. No, no I don't think You so. just kind of did it. Yeah. And I was just kind of trying to hold the frame because I knew that, for him to, it was his time to make those choices. Yeah. Because if I was trying to do a little bit of this, it could have turned into a disaster. And with the nature of that shot, it's like we can't take crazy chances yeah. that we that aren't going to work. Because yeah. then this is all for nothing. That's the thing. Because like when I'm, yeah. Because yeah. I think the first take or two, I probably either you know stayed on her in the back or went back and forth. And I think that time, like it was just one of those times. And it like. That's also like the other huge joy of the show is like watching some of these actors too because they're Absolutely. amazing. It's they're incredible yeah. performances. So it's like, you know, just seeing him there and like watching all this stuff hitting him. I'm like, I think I'm just gonna stay here. And then like, that's always the moment when like my heart starts beating out of my chest and I'm like, oh god, this is like <laughs> minute eight. <laughs> If Chris hates this, yeah. I'm going to be in big trouble. Well, I, I, that's why I was going to ask about that. It, it isn't a, a 30 second shot where they're like, that sucks. Do it again. You're like, you are right. eight minutes into this shot. Yeah. And, and so, I mean, is that just basically, I, I mean, it sounds like it's just, you're watching the story and you're like, you know what? The story's here. I'm going here. Totally. And everybody, mm -hmm. but it seems like a lot of that is from both of you, just commitment and, and trust, right? It's definitely and, trust on my end because, you know, and it's trust in every direction, I think. You probably feel the same totally. way where it's like, you know, Chris and Drew trust us to make decisions like that, but they also trust the actors to just... You're talking about Chris, the showrunner, Chris and, the, and Drew, Drew the, is our DP, DP. yeah. And, uh, you know, they trust us to kind of make those choices on the fly and also, you know, not go too off the reservation. Mm -hmm. And also the actors trust... They have the trust from those guys, especially Chris, to kind of take it where they feel it needs to be taken. And then they trust us to be there when they're going to take it somewhere that maybe we didn't expect or talk about yeah. or whatever. And I think that in a, that's like the perfect example of it where it's that's like amazing. you can see all those words landing on Richie and Eben's performance is so strong that it's just like there's no, you know, it, it, you want to be with him in that moment because that's the story. The story is him having to deal with this person hitting him with some truths about himself yeah. that he probably doesn't want to hear, especially yeah. in that moment. Wow. Um, so, so uh, since you were talking about the trust in Chris and, and Drew, is it so, do they not give you specific, specific, I mean, I'm sure on some shots they do, but for the most part, do they just sort of go, all right, here's, here's the story. Here's how we're covering it. You guys then, then, take it from there or, or is Chris very specific when he's directing anyway I'll let you start that one Chris has <laughs> like and that's part of that the beauty of Chris is that like he comes in knowing exactly what he wants like out of the actors out of the scene in general he's a lot of times he's got specific shots what he says is not always necessarily what he wants which is a, a real testament to, to Drew and Gary is that they've been, I, they, they've known Chris for a long time. 10, gonna, 10, how long have you guys years. all worked together before? Uh, it's 15 or so years. But I mean, they, um, they are experts at listening to what, yeah, Drew and, and Gary are experts at listening to what Chris says he wants and interpreting it to give him what he actually wants. Cause he doesn't always, it's not always what he says is not exactly what he wants. And they are very good at finding 
the shot that he wants yeah. within his descriptions. So it's like, you know, there's a, there's definitely a starting place there. But like, as far as like, you know, when we're talking like focus things, you know, there's a lot of times where I'll go up to directors or DPs and be like, you know, I see what we're looking at here. Do you want me to do this or that? And like, that's the beauty of working with Chris and Drew is that they have like complete trust in everybody on That's the crew, amazing. really. I mean, he, they're very, you know, they've seen what we can do, especially over the last, you know, three seasons. And there's not, there doesn't always need to be a lot of talking through yeah. it. Like we can come in and, you know, in the morning, uh, you know, I mean, Chris is always there like three hours early. But <laughs> these guys show up and Chris is like, all right, here's what we're going to do. Yep. Boom, 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 boom. And he walks out and they take 10 minutes to set it up and we're rolling like yeah. 10 minutes after call. Every, we, he, every single day. He, uh, wow. We started doing the shot clock, which yes. was fun. We would get a half hour pre-call, you know, and then we would walk in and we would have our little powwow in the morning. And then they would literally on the clock in the kitchen put the countdown for first shot 25 minutes from yeah. now. Wow. Which is call time. So, like, we were usually rolling. If our call was 7, we were rolling at 7.01. We weren't quite that way, but that reminds me of ER. Because <laughs> it was all overhead lit, and they'd turn on the lights, and we'd just go. So, yeah. yeah. Yeah, but it yeah. wasn't quite. quite the, um, I want to back up, because I wanted to ask you actually something, Matt. What you were talking about, you know, making those choices, right? Mm -hmm. and, and historically, I don't know what the word is. That's not something that every AC, you know, most ACs don't come on a show and go, I'm going to focus where I want. <laughs> and I'm wondering, were you that person or did you come on this show and it was a process and, and are you screwed when you move on to the next thing? <laughs> I take those chances at very specific opportunities. I'm yeah. generally, like, I'm generally not that person. Usually I'm the person who's like, I'll, I'll go to the director or DP and be like, what do you, you know, what do you want, do you want in yeah. the scene? And, you know, I'm happy to do that. But like I said, in this, you know, in this crew, it's like, there's a, just a wild amount of trust among everyone. And so they're very willing to let me make choices like that. And like, it's something that I take, you know, kind of seriously on this one. Like I love reading all the scripts. Like I want to know what's going on. I'll sit down and I'll read the sides every morning just to like refresh myself yeah. just so that like I can understand, you know, in a, in a moment like that where it's, it's not about Sydney losing her mind. It's about what she's saying to Richie. And like, and, you know, I know where this is going down the road. And so like all that kind of stuff informs those choices that, that I'm, able to make well and everything you're talking about is it's it's storytelling right yeah and that's what yeah. i always say is like gary's I'm a storyteller story. you're a storyteller i mean the food stylists are storytellers all that stuff for sure um and you know gary and i were once talking about the fact and i'm wondering you know what you both have to say about this hopefully you'll agree with it um is you only get that gold if you're willing to step out on the edge and 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 fail right totally. it's like yeah. i mean so so are you sometimes going like I'm going to go for this, but I have no idea if this is going to be right. Totally. There was, I mean, there was a show that I w was working on like pre COVID and it was very much a similar situation where there's, there's two characters in frame, different depths. And the thing that, that one character was saying were they were like, they were talking about one thing and to me at least, as far as like the story and the script was concerned, meant something completely different to the person who was hearing it. And in that instance, I did something very similar. I, I, I pulled focus to the, to the person that those words were affecting, and we did the take. I mean, it wasn't like you know, a 20 minute take, so, but we did the take and we finished it and the director came over to me and was like, what the fuck? <laughs> Why didn't you focus on the guy who was talking? I was like, oh, sorry. I'm sorry. I'm I won't do that again. Three, I'm going to show three years from now that hasn't started yet. Um, yeah, so but that, it, doesn't always, it doesn't always work out. Well, that's why so I asked you, are you in trouble when you move on to the next thing? Yeah, I mean, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Right, we'll see. Yeah, well, that, that, that's amazing. Um, uh, going back to the, the big shot that you did, uh, episode seven. And by the way, anybody who's listening or anybody in the audience, um, if you go to the op.io, there's something called the breakdown where some of the best camera operators right here sitting next to me um, I will break down shots that they've done. And Gary has done both a big, that big winner and in uh, season two. I don't know if that's out yet. Maybe it's not out. Mm -hmm. um, but along with others, and it's it's film school. I mean, it's, it's unbelievable. You should check it out. But um, that shot was 17 minutes long. Did we say it was 17 minutes long? Something, Something like, like that. that. Yeah. yeah. It wasn't like it was 20. I mean, whatever. <laughs> um, but 
what what's the mental head game of doing a shot that big and like you said you know i mean to me it's always like if you stumble at 30 seconds you're like all right we can back up and start over again yeah. but then you get to like the four minute mark and then you get to and then the horrible part to me is always you get to like 16 minutes and you're like <laughs> i don't care if this building burns down yeah i'm not i mean it, how We're do you gonna how finish do you keep, this yeah. how do you keep that how do you keep that out how I'm, do you not let it affect you I don't know. I think it's just like such a testament to like the preparation that we all, you know, like from the top down and just, you know, everybody's so on their game. You don't want to be the one that's not on their game. But how do you let that, that not get in your head and mess with you? I, mean, I don't know. For me, it's the work, you know, I mean, I think like just yeah, staying in it and yeah. just, you know, like being in the moment if you're, yeah, I mean, it's kind of like looking yeah. Or that like next choice to make, like if yeah. you're going to stick with what you did the last time or if you're going to choose to do something else or just, yeah, like for me, it's like, I don't know, kind of taking it like, especially with that one, it was great because it was such a clear series of beats. It was kind of like, okay, we made it through this piece and then we do the transition and then we're kind of locked into the next piece and then there's a transition. And so yeah. it, like, I feel like that helped a little bit because you can always like, kind of put a little mental check mark yeah. there and be like, okay, I did that, made it, moving on to the next thing. Yeah, I think it was just so much of like, it is this one long giant shot that's one scene, but there's so many moments within it and treating each of those as its own thing is so, that, that was really vital for me, just like knowing where I was going to go next. I had like those little mile markers, mm -hmm. you know, where it was like, okay, I got to, now we got to go through the door and now the, whatever. It was just a ladder. It's just yeah. Like, and, boom, I, boom. and I think it's so much of it too, is just like, it's theater. That's the thing that was so nice about it. Cause we don't really ever get put in that space. No. So for us to be with them where it was like, you know, you have your moment with an actor, but they're going in the background and you're carrying on, they're still acting. They, and you told me they're also actually still preparing. For, yeah, and there was real chickens and all that and stuff back there. Yeah, so they all to hide anything. And like when you know, like Richie's does the fries, he's actually doing the fries, mm -hmm. and they were really on the grill and making beefs yeah. and doing all that stuff. And it's amazing. It was all going on in the background, and they had to stay in it, which I think was kind of cool because you didn't have that second to, you know, check like out. get yeah to check out. Yeah, you, had, we were, you were you were in the background, you know. You had to be listening because you had to know, oh, at that point, I need to go do this or whatever. Yeah, yeah. So, like, everybody was on their toes in that regard, yeah. which I think really helped because it did. It became more like theater where it's like cues are so important and all that stuff is just kind of on you. Yeah. You know, there's no AD in there. Like, and quite honestly, I mean, that set wasn't the biggest set in the world, but we saw everywhere. So the only people that were in there were me, my dolly grip, and the boom guy, and that's it. And he was outside. Everybody's outside. I'm actually surprised that there was even a boom in there. I, I don't know. How. Oh, my God. We, we talk about that he's, all the who's time. Who's your boom operator? Uh, Joe Campbell. Yeah, who I, I mean, done. to this day, I don't know if he's invisible or <laughs> what. Because I think on every, we, we went through that, what, five times? Well, yeah, five, right? I yeah. think we saw the boom maybe once Yeah. in five takes. Yeah. It was, in, he's incredible. Are there times when you're panning through him and he's just like making fries? So it looks like, <laughs> I mean, that's, I don't know. I didn't even think about that because I, I mean, obviously I don't know what that space is, but to watch that show, yeah. like, I don't even know how you did what you did. It's, it's one of those things too, where like, I mean, one of the luxuries for sure was the fact that it was the end of the season. You know, if we had to do that early on, so it would have been way jail. more challenging. Yeah. Okay. But I think the fact that we were all in the rhythm together and we knew the set really well and, the, you know, the actors were comfortable with what they were doing and, like, that definitely was a big part of yeah. why it was successful. Mm -hmm. um, but, yeah, I think that just kind of getting, getting to the point where it was like, okay, like, you guys have it now. So, like, once I knew the path, then we could kind of start working on where it's like, okay, like this is where I think you can get in here. Well, this time I'm going to have to do this and it's going to be a 180. So you guys got to duck and then you got to meet me on the other side or whatever, you know, like you got to let me go for a second. And then did you shoot that back. whole thing in one day. Yeah. We were done by lunch. Yeah. <laughs> That's insane. We started at well, seven I, and we were done at noon. I mean, to be fair, they, they had several days. Yeah. The actors had a couple of days of rehearsal. Yeah. Okay. I think so. They were dialed in. Yeah, so, they were dialed in. I think you had a if I, we had a day where you walked through it with yeah. them. Yeah. If I remember it correctly, and you can fact check me because my memory <laughs> might not be great, but they, 
however many weeks it was before that they were like okay we're thinking about doing this and we were all kind of like okay sure and then sure enough they actually wanted to do it and um you know when we kicked around can we do it on the ronin can we do it on a you know uh do we need to bring a steady cam guy in and then it kind of just got to the point where we're like it's there's no other way we just don't have room for anything but a guy with a camera on his shoulder yeah. so that once that got settled then they rewrote the script if i remember correctly like not really like rewrote it but rewrote it more like in Taylor. a format yeah. that was like for a table read so they could get the vibe of like because chris isn't real big on um screen direction and the scripts generally oh. so like this one leaned in a little bit more to it just so they had an idea to of where to go yeah. kind of thing so i think they did that the one day while we were shooting still yeah. And then the next day was like some glorified insert day for food for yeah. us while the actors and me and everybody did a table read yep. and kind of walked through it. And then we had a thing that was set up earlier in the year for, I think it was for Drew's purposes, just for like lighting and whatnot, or like he had look, like laminated... Uh, Oh, yeah, you know, like, like yeah, like a, a plot, plot of the, yeah, of the like an overhead of the stage. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. I was sitting there with a dry erase marker, like a psycho, as they were doing the table read, being like, "Okay, that's them there." That's. I'm going to interrupt for a second and say, if you watch the breakdown that Gary, uh, Gary did on this, you'll see that laminated yeah. thing. Yeah, it, it's meaningless. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> because, no. because he's going no. around like over himself so many times. I don't know if it meant anything to you at the end, but you look at it, you're like, "It was." Oh. Yeah, I mean, when you when I actually looked at the you know the finished product, it is complete nonsense. No, it's like this person shouldn't not only be camera operating, but like shouldn't be driving. It's yeah, exactly. <laughs> but the but it was me tr just talking. Yeah. Lot. When my wife got home from like a, uh, she was out to you know dinner with the girls, and she came home one night, and I was at the, it was the night before we were gonna shoot it, and I was at the kitchen counter like full mad scientist mode, <laughs> and she was like, "What are you working on?" And I was like, "Not now." <laughs> <laughs> and are you and and basically, but, but are you? mentally walking through the space and going okay now i'm coming down to the fries now he's got his line and i'm going to come over here yeah i mean i have a uh chris dame who's our b camera operator who's great was obviously uh, you know not working during all this so he it was kind of like my at first we were going to be on the comms together like he was going to be like you know my offensive coordinator or he was going to be in my ear being What's like next? you're going here next you're going here next yeah. and then it ended up that i just didn't really need that because i had gone through it so much but i got a i still have a, a list from him that's on the back of the script that's like me and him are the only two people that can understand this. Maybe you. Oh, you gotta send me that. I want to see. But it. it's, it's like fantastic. you know, this was good. This handoff was yeah. good. This over was good. Like all those things. Wow. You know? And so I was thinking about it like that, where it was like, okay, not only like do I need to know where I need to go, but I also need to know, okay, I need to be over them, and then I need to be ready to follow them, and then there's a handoff here, and then like knowing, because I knew that if anything like fell, like I thought about it like monkey bars, you know, where it's like I got to be able to grab the next one, <laughs> or the shot ends. Yeah. Yeah. You you know, because if there's nobody, you know, I need a reason to go places. Yeah. You yeah. miss one transition yeah. And, yeah, and, it, and the whole thing is. Any mo un any unmotivated camera movement was going to really stand out. Yeah. It kills it, right? Yeah. I mean, so, it's like you and I have talked about wonders. It's like it's like a shark. If it doesn't keep moving with yeah. purpose, it dies. Right? Yeah. yeah. Just, you have to, they, monkey bars is a great example. Yeah, because it's like you're just hanging on. That's yeah. like how I felt about it. So it's like I just need someone to hang on to and take me to the next thing. It's amazing. And so that's all I was thinking about when I was going through all that. And then I think you, I don't know how you, I mean, you probably more were worried about like how is everybody going to like, how are we going to do this logistically? A little bit. I mean, <laughs> you know, not having to have, a, you know, only knowing there were only going to be like three people in there was, I mean, I don't know. I didn't have to move around in there, so I was that yeah. was fine. That yeah, was I nice could just stay outside. <laughs> I'll tell you, uh, from a focus point of view, one of my one of my favorite moments of that show of that episode is is the last image because uh, Carmi, what, what is it? He throws something down or he pushes the thing over, and then he, he walks out of the doors. Yeah. And and you get and Gary goes with him, and then you focus to the rules of the house instead of taking him out the door. Yeah. And it was just such a great coda to that whole to the whole I think it's the it's the ticket machine at yeah. the end of that he pushes episode. down the he throws down he, the he throws something yeah. at the ticket and the ticket machine he is just like the shit out of it yeah, yeah. it's it yeah. just still <laughs> spitting out tickets and like that was kind of the whole that was like the undercurrent of that like the second half of that episode you know when they realize that how screwed they are because yeah. they've got a million orders that have come yeah. in overnight yeah. and they turn the ticket machine on and it just keeps spitting out the, you know they laid that under 
everything for the second half of the episode. Yeah. So it's just like this constant like jabbing, and like oh, then at the end of you the can episode, hear it when too. he finally, you know, then they really pump it up there at the end. Yeah. Like yeah, when he it's you great. Know, it's hits great. it, walks out the door. It's like that thing is still going. It doesn't but, matter that but again, everybody's but my, gone. But my point is, is he walked out the door, and a lot of guys would have focus wise just taken him out the door, and instead you pulled you pulled to the the sign there, and it was yeah. such a great. I mean, that makes sense to me. That yeah. makes sense. Well, it's like that's though. what the yeah. It was yeah, like no. they were they didn't follow a single rule. Yeah, on that. <laughs> no, it was it was <laughs> fantastic. Yeah. It was I, great. It, well, and the thing that's funny, too, is just the nature of kind of the freedom of the show where it's like everybody's kind of like put in this box of like what we're trying to do story wise and kind of, you know, the feel and tone of everything. But at the same time, like everybody gets to now work inside that box. So like this like weird creativity kind of yeah. gets unlocked, yeah. you know. So like at the original, uh, the original was to us just land on the tickets. And yeah. like they're just still coming out, and that was supposed oh, to and be just let Carmi go. Yeah, and that was supposed to be the button on the episode was is that it's just like the tickets are still going out. This is not solved yet. Did you, know? you do any takes where you did that? Yeah, and then as we're ramping up, and I think it must have been. I think they used the fourth one. I can't remember. Something like that. But uh, the that fourth take, uh, Jeremy came back and hit the ticket thing, which was never planned. So he just decided to do that, yeah. and so now I'm being like, okay, that was pretty cool. And then I'm waiting for them to yell cut while I'm just on the tickets. Yeah. And then he just, just I, I didn't know where he was. And then I just see him in the background coming around the corner. And I was like, I guess I'll just follow him. And then Matt just <laughs> stayed with him. And that was like all just on the fly. But I, I'll tell you, you, you guys aren't going to say that. But that's because you are both excellent storytellers. And so in the moment, you know where it is and you know where to go. And, and, and that's such a better way to end that shot in that episode than, than on the tickets. Well, and it's just funny because, you know, as much as you try to be a storyteller, like you have to kind of just do it on the fly. Yeah. So like as much as like there is the trust that you get from everybody, uh, you know, that's up at the monitor watching and putting this all on it together, you also have to trust yourself that you're going to do the right and, thing and, and on the last minute or second or whatever, you <laughs> yeah. know what I mean? But I think also we've talked about it before, like commitment is a huge part of this, right? Like if, if you falter and you're like, eh, maybe I should go, you're done. But yeah. if you're going, you're going. And if you're stopping, you're stopping. And if you're throwing focus, you're throwing focus. Yeah, that was something I, I don't even remember, but some, you know, when talking to somebody early on, when I started pulling focus, they were like, don't, don't ever go halfway. Cause even, going halfway is going to look worse than either actual choice you can make. So if you're going to make the choice, just do it. Yeah. And if they hate it, you're going to do another take. You're probably going to do another take anyway. So yeah. like, don't, well, it's like, it's like if you no. go halfway, you've yeah. made the wrong choice. And if you go all the way, you might have made the wrong choice. Yeah. And you'll find out in a couple yeah. of minutes. Yeah, but so, yeah, you go halfway yeah. and you're guaranteed to That's amazing. You know, look. Uh, I want to ask you about the food because I will tell you that I generally watch the show after dinner because if not, I have to eat <laughs> like right after. I, so when you're working, is it just like, I mean, are you constantly hungry? <laughs> It always smells good. Yeah. That's like, it's true. always is nice it real, to walk it's in. It's all real food. It's right? all, yeah. the, like, the set that they built is, it's a real kitchen. Like, yeah. it's, there's working ranges and ovens and, you know. It's hot in there. Salamanders, it's like, like everything. Yeah. Fridges, everything in the kitchen wow. works. I'll tell you, I'm a, I'm a vegetarian, and there's sometimes where I'm like, I don't know, meat looks pretty good. Um, but, I mean, do you guys get to eat stuff? Yeah, we uh, get sometimes. spoiled a little yeah. bit. Yeah. yeah, I mean, some people probably get in there a little bit more than others. <laughs> Uh, very you know, true. Some people are, you know, chomping. Some people have like, like a dedicated tasting spoon. That's maybe correct. like I've, I've heard connected. I think Gary to actually their might equipment. Have a dedicated, yeah, it might even be an engraved dedicated. <laughs> yeah, I think it does spoon. have his name on it. Yeah. And, yes, and one of our uh, one of our talented electricians, Pierce Elner, gave uh, some. I, I went to Some visit monarch, Gary. Mono, I went to yeah, visit Gary on whatever. It hangs on the side of the the, the yeah, wheels. we made a nice little nice little holder that you put. Found some little you know camera pieces. But so found the, a way to hang his. I admittedly right was like kind of scared to use it too because I was just like it's, <laughs> it's like it's you know. But the lower caste people like you, Matt, are finger folks. I did not get this good, No, I just have to. Just like they throw it on the floor and you eat it. Like we all dog. fight for it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and you told me that there's like five-star Michelin chefs who are making this. Oh, show. yeah. I mean, there's people there that are like, it's kind of Insanely like... Insanely talented. Yeah, it's like, it's yes. kind of insane. It's like, you know, you're... 
it, I imagine it's like what people feel like if they like work on like a Michael Jordan commercial or something, you know, where it's just like, oh, there's like the best ever doing yeah, the thing right? that they're the best at. Yeah. And then they're just coming over and like, hey, man, you know where the bathrooms are? And you're just like, <laughs> oh, this, you're like a normal person. <laughs> Huh. The, the, the thing that gets me is like, I'm not saying this in a bad way, but you meet you, Gary, and like, you sort of have a blue collar vibe. Whatever. <laughs> this guy? And then, then, then they'll start talking about the show and Gary's like the, the bouge of all these like, <laughs> French things that I've never heard of. And he knows what they all mean. I mean, have you, have you guys learned like a tremendous amount about, about cooking and food and whatever in the process? Uh, I mean, I was admittedly kind of a dork about it before that. But you're a foodie now. I, well, I was pre, pre the bear. You're kind of a snob, actually. Yes, yes. They, <laughs> well, I mean, we had worked, uh, they, Chris and Drew actually brought me into the world of fine dining many, 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 many years ago. Oh, so this, okay. And so they, they ruined me about 12 years prior <laughs> to the bear where I was just, yeah. yeah. And, you know, I was eating pizza by the slice. Ah. And I would, came home from a trip and I was like, it's, everything's different now. Oh, boy. Yeah, yeah. Um, but no, it's, I mean, it is amazing because it's cool to be, it's cool to work on something that you are interested in. Yeah. So like the fact that you're working with all these incredible chefs and I mean, uh, obviously Maddie is there and Coco, who uh, is Chris's sister, who is an incredible chef. She's like the culinary producer. Oh, no way. Yeah. And then she also brought her like incredible team of chefs. And, uh, you know, just watching them work is like, you know, that's cool. It's just like one of those things where you're like, I would have to like catch myself, you know, because I had to like start like <laughs> doing it where it's like, I need to know this for the shot. <laughs> you know what I mean? But really, it was just like, so how long? So, oh, and then you do that. Okay. Yeah. okay. All right. Okay. Yeah. 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 And I, wait, what? Like, why do you need to know this, Don? So we're reducing. We've reduced yeah. now. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's fantastic. Well, the, you know, watching the show, one of the inter one of the things that I really like about the show, and in a weird way, it reminds me of, I did West Wing for a little bit, and it was West Wing had a similar thing to this. There's no, we're going to explain all this to you. There's just, we're going to, like, all the food terminology and whatever. Yeah. It's, like, it's like, there's no, like, new person who comes in where they're like, really? You don't know what reducing is? Well, reducing is blah, blah, blah. <laughs> it's like, no, you're going to have to pay attention and figure this out as the audience. And I so I so appreciate that. And, and it's, it, it, speaking to the camera work in relation to that, one of the things, episode seven, I would say, aside, which the camera work was almost, it was much more a part of it, obviously, from what it was. The camera work is so sort of, the only word I can use is subtle, and it's like it's not in your face. And, and I was telling Gary uh, the other day in episode four or five when Tina screws up. Uh, oh, Tina the makes the mashed potatoes, potatoes yeah, yeah, yeah. and she goes over to Sydney and says, all right, here, try them. You're going to hate them. And Sydney goes, no, they're great, chef. And she walks over, and she walks over to the, to, to the oven or the stove, and she's mixing something or whatever, and she's smiling. And, you can, and it's like it's a big moment for her. But you're in kind of like a three-quarter back profile of her. You're not like right. You're not hitting the audience over the head with that. And I'm wondering, is that a, is that a choice to do those kind of things? Because there's a lot of that. I mean, in that moment, I, I mean, I think a lot of it too is just so kind of like this kind of like doc style, even though it's very cinematic. Where it's like they, so much of it is just based off of like here's where they have to be to right. yeah. work on mashed potatoes. Yeah. You know? And so I could have gotten around on that in that situation because earlier in that shot we do start around her yeah yeah but i think at the end of the day like it was a more of a kind of thing where it was like yeah you got this kudos and you 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 passed this hurdle but like you still have to make all these mashed potatoes yeah. like it's it is just like that personal moment where it's like yeah you did a good job but like back to work, back yeah. to work. which i think a lot of us in the film industry know where it's just like yeah you know you get your little pat on the back but at the end of the day what's next yeah you know, well, to that, make a it, West Wing uh, it, it, it come, But it comes reference. through in that. And the funny thing is, then it cuts to her turning, and it's right in front of her. Yeah. And she pushes in on her saying, thanks, yeah. chef. But, but, it but that's the moment where it's like, I feel like if we had tried to get around too much on her on the other side, it wouldn't have hit as much. Exactly right. It's yeah. a button on that moment. It's, yeah. so, it's so good. But there's so much. And the other thing I was thinking when I was watching it and preparing for this is like, at first I was thinking like the food is a character, but in a weird way, it's the prep is, is a character. I mean, I always felt that way. It helped us a lot in terms of like, because blocking is such an integral part yeah. of what we do. And I think that it was really nice to know where it's like, well, where would you do that? And then a chef, go, that one of the real chefs in there would be like, oh, you would never do that there. Yeah. You do that over here. And it was oh, like, great. Okay. Gotcha. You know, so it, they definitely helped us 
keep it not only like realistic, but also like created that, you know, that structure for us to work yeah. off of. Yeah, like I would say like, not even like the prep, but like the process of it. Yeah. Because like there is just like naturally so much movement, you know, in between, you know, going down to get something out of the fridge and putting it on the counter yeah. and chopping it, turning around, moving it to the stove, turning back around to get something like there's such a, there's such a, you know, a well, movement like a ballet built into all, right? the For way sure. that this, you know, yeah. space actually functions that like that, that plays a huge part in, in how the shots are created. Okay, I, for sure. And then I think another big part of it that I know me and you talk about is that there is this kind of like embracing the imperfection of it all. Cause like these actors are also learning a lot of this stuff as you know, I mean, they all put the work in and they went to their culinary schools and they, you know, they, they obviously did their prep work, but at the end of the day, like they are being told in the moment where it's like, no, you grab this, you, you know, and the, and the order of things can get confusing and it's a lot. And you're also trying to give a performance and that's a lot to keep in your brain. Yeah. And for us, it was just kind of like really like with me and you for the, with working with the actors, it was very much like, okay, so you're going to do this, you're going to do the salt. And then it was like, okay. And then they'd be like, then I'm going to do this. And it's like, ah, but is it the parsley first or is it the salt first? And then it'd be like, chef, you know? And then like you'd have <laughs> to ask. ask the question. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And then everybody would be on that same page. So I yeah. think like that part of like the process, like not only like the process of making food, but also the process of filmmaking, like kind of coming together where like we did realize that we are kind of very similar yeah. as yeah. much as we are, That's you amazing. know, wildly yeah. different at the same time. But, you know, it's like that process is really what kind of brought us together. So then it was like, it's okay if you mess up. You know what I mean? So and, and then it's like kind of the thing where like the camera knows where you're going. Yeah. So it's like, if you don't get there right away, like it's okay if it's not 100% perfect because none of it never is. That's great. And, well, and the other thing that, that occurred to me is I, I, I usually hate cutaways. They drive me nuts. And this show is all, of, it's not, they're not cutaways. I mean, they're not cutaways at all. They're like their own elements of all these things. And even like you have this great, it's like a static shot of cans and stuff like that. Yeah. I was wondering how designed are those things? Like, do you do, do you do the episode and you go, well, this is the filler we need? Or do you, <laughs> you have stock stuff or? Matt? Chris Dane, <laughs> our B camera operator is the king of capturing every tiny detail, every moment in every set that we get into. It's He's, incredible. Really? He, yeah. a lot of times, I mean, a lot of times it, it works as a one camera show. And yeah. so Chris is, every place we go, anytime they redress the, the sets that we're working on, he is in there like scoping out anything that's new, anything that's interesting, yeah. anything that could be interesting and he captures but, yeah, all like, of that stuff. To the point where if someone accidentally spills something that has nothing to do with what we're doing, he'll just be like, don't clean that up. And he'll come and <laughs> shoot it. You know what I mean? And it's like like, the, one of the best examples, I think, is when the, the episode, the, the flashback episode from last year, The Fishes. Yeah. yeah. We went into that house and they had dressed it. Oh, with like, all the tchotchkes. Yeah, like an yeah. insane person's Christmas He just loses his mind. So Chris, oh, my God. He made his own movie. Yeah. He literally, I mean, he went in that, he shot every <laughs> single piece of set dressing in that so, house. So you so guys like, are off in some other room doing some major scene and he's just And even like, you know, even when we're doing two camera scenes, it's like, you know, we moved to a new setup and Chris is like, hey, come here. Let, 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 we got to get this real quick. Yeah. I just saw this upstairs. Come, let's bring the camera real quick. So great. I mean, he's, yeah. And he, he's, he's responsible for a lot of all thousand of, yards of errors around yeah. set because they're just like, he's still shooting. Yeah. <laughs> And like, and it's, and it's like waiting for the, for the food to drop off the, off the can or something. Yeah, and then he's also too, definitely too. the guy that was like, oh, oh can I hit, I'll have a piece yeah. of that. <laughs> but I mean, it's, I think it's a testament too to like the art direction and the set decoration on that show. For because sure. every single piece, they know every oh, single yeah. thing that they put in that house could potentially be shot. So there's yeah. no like, oh, that's good yeah. enough or whatever. You know, they're, they're in there making everything on that set look perfect. Yeah, that's for amazing. sure. And I think like the sentiment that we had for the Wonder where it is like that thing where it's like, you know, you got to be held account, you're accountable because, you know, you can't be the one that misses it. Like, I think that that kind of culture permeated throughout all of production gotcha. where everybody started feeling that way where I was just like, oh, well, like, how can I level up? How can we make this better? And everybody coming from that kind of approach 
it's funny how it just kind of ends up working out. Like you kind of put yourself in this position to get lucky, you know, where I think a lot of the things that has been kind of planned, like ends up being maybe something yeah. a little bit different, but it's like, oh, well, that's what it should be. Yeah. And, and then once you it, see it, it's like, oh, that's undeniable. You know, there are those moments where it's like, oh, we got lucky, but we got lucky because the work was done was beforehand. Yeah. yeah exactly. You know, everything was ready. I don't think you guys get lucky at all. I think you're all good. <laughs> that, I mean, you know, there's a, there's an uh, luck is some of it, but it's, it's knowing it, it's being able to know when you get lucky that this is good. That's, that's the thing. And that's talent right there. You know, one of the things that I love about the show, which I think some of it has to do with you guys, but some of it comes from up high is there's no fat. It's like, it's just, I mean, and I, was, I think I was telling you one of my favorite moments, I mean, I almost gasped was when you find out the first time you find out that Sydney is taking all those medications and it was just opening the, the, the cabinet, medicine cabinet, and there's all these medications. She takes right out and she closes it and that's it. There's like no explanation, but as an audience member, you, and I think the camera work, but what both of you are doing reflects that, you know, it's not, we have to like see everything all the time. It's, it's, we, we're going to focus on him because she's yelling at him and it's about him. And I just, is that always in the back of your mind? Just keep it simple, keep it simple, keep it simple. Yeah, I mean, I think that a lot of that comes from Chris and, you know, it's just the, he says simple storytelling a lot on set. It comes through. Because I think that there is, at least from my point of view and having worked with him and done that for so long now, like there's like a lot of complexity in simplicity and there's a lot, you know, and like sometimes that stuff seems far more like technically wild than it actually is and i think it's just because you know this is it this is all you need to see and now you can let your imagination run and that's more impactful than us being like you know here's the insert and what she's taking exactly it's like yeah. you don't need to know that you don't you know you just you know you learn what you need to learn about her in that moment and that's enough and yeah. then it makes her a much you know i think chris knows that the characters and the show benefit from just the simplicity of that. And then it becomes more complex because now people are left to their own conclusions. They're left to their, how they relate to it or whatever. And then, you know, you're not showing your hand too much. Well, it also, I think it makes, it makes you as a viewer an active participant. Cause if you're not, you're, you're never going to figure out what's going on. Like you have to actually stay engaged, which is great. Yeah. How and I think we were also too, like so much, you know, we do do a lot of slick kind of camera stuff in the show and it's like it always has to be justified yeah. like i it, we're not I, it's cool for cool sake is like the worst thing nope that, yeah you know we like we're very, I, like i remember talking to jeremy about the first wonder where like it was like we got to make sure it's not that it's not about the camera yeah it's about, yeah it, there's a reason for it. like you and shouldn't I, notice it well that i don't know if you remember but after i called called you because i was like this is just a wonder uh the thing that i i, I said and i still have seen it since that was, I think, is the best way to tell that story. Like, if that, if that episode had been cut into pieces and coverage and whatever, it just would not have the immediacy that it has. So it wasn't a gimmick. It actually was... The first... When the first season came out, you know, like, it, it, I think they put it out, like, at midnight, you know, on the day that it was released. I, I stayed up, and the first thing I did was watch episode seven. Oh, really? And I just watched it all the way through, and then I went to bed. I was like, all right, we, looks good. Yeah. <laughs> then, like, I, I went back... Um, I don't know, a few months later probably, I was like, I'm going to watch it again. And then I started watching it, and they started putting commercials in it, like on Hulu. I guess, you know, true. for like the first month or well, something, they show it commercial free. that's just because you're paying $5.99 free. instead of $7.99. Yeah. On, so, I, I, like, I started watching it again, oh. and a commercial came up. I was that's like, horrible. what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> and it was like the worst experience I could have possibly imagined oh, in God. watching that episode. Yeah. So. Oh, well. It's <laughs> above our pay grade. There you go. Um, tell me about the actors. We're working with the actors. I mean, this seems like, oh, like watching them, I want to think, A, that they're some of the coolest people and just they're so talented. Yeah, you're, yeah. that's all true. They're the nicest, like most, you know, thoughtful, just, you prepared. know. Yeah, prepared, you know. I yeah. mean, it's... And just like not like... I don't know. I'm always impressed. Like Jeremy is like so... And I mean, he's, you know, he's kind of grown up in, yeah. in television series. Yeah. But I mean, like... You, you don't even have to ask him to do something. It, you know, like, I think just towards the end of the season, when we were on the, on the boat, and you were like, hey, Jeremy, can you? And he's like, oh, do you want me to just, like, move like this so you can see what I'm doing? <laughs> and you're like, yeah, cool. Yeah. And, like, 
you know, he knows what you're looking for. He knows what the camera's looking for. It's great. And yeah, they're and also, all... he had, like, I don't know, there, I think it was episode three or episode four, you're out on the beach and you're behind yeah. him at sunset and, and you come around and you come into this close-up of him. And actually, one of the things that I love is you came around in this close-up of him and you just stop as the flare came into the right-hand <laughs> side of the frame and held it. And I was like, ah, oh, that's so beautiful. That was, uh, yeah, Drew. Yeah. Was yeah. Like, hey, man, <laughs> keep that flare in, would you? Yeah, it was, my wife always knows when I'm watching the bear because she's like, why do you keep on screaming i hate you gary <laughs> it's, a, it's a very complicated story but um yeah it's these moments where i'm like maybe i could just break the knee and i could get that job um but uh You're but too tall. just do it at yeah, work you know just do it at work make tall. it look like an accident the bear this season seems much taller but otherwise <laughs> um but but no you know it holds on that close-up of him for a while and he's just one of those actors that you could just watch a close-up and there's just, I mean, there's stuff going on. There's just oh, like I a mean, million things going so on behind fascinating his eyes. To watch, but they're yeah. all sort of, they're all sort They all, of for they sure. All and they've all, and that's the one thing that I think is really cool about the, uh, the writing on the show and just the storytelling nature of it is, is that all those actors have, over the time, really been given their spotlight, that character, totally. their character. Totally. And like, they have such like rewarding arcs and, you know, they're so, they're so, their their performances are so human, but their stories are so human too. And I think that it's just such a beautiful thing to watch them bring those That's things great. to life. And you know, I mean, no better. I, I mean, I, there's obviously everybody has their their examples of it, but the a, the Al-Anon speech in season one from Jeremy, where it's like, it's just a seven minute close up, and it's incredible. <laughs> It's, it's like, unbelievable. Yeah, it's, I mean, I, no. I, will no, I will never do anything as good as he did that speech. It's incredible. It was in only interrupted in my house by the I hate you, Gary, <laughs> every couple of minutes because you got to. But when you're standing, was, uh, I forget, was, no, that wasn't handheld. That was, that was no, that was on a dolly, yeah. But when, you, when you're sitting there four feet away from this guy giving that speech, how does, I mean, is, is, that, is, is it just unbelievable? I think that a lot of the time, I mean, yeah, it is wild. I mean, there's definitely times where you get caught watching TV. For sure. I mean, and luckily for me, I don't have to do much on that shot. <laughs> but uh, no, I mean, he's, you know, I remember him saying too, he's like, we're going to cover this, right? And we're like, yeah, for sure. We're going to do sizes. And we went over to Chris. He's like, no way are we covering this. <laughs> <laughs> is that, does that happen a lot where it's, I mean, that's a different thing, but where you've got four people in a scene and you shoot something and you're like, yeah, moving on, we got no, it. Yeah, that does happen a lot. I think that Chris is, if Chris finds that it works, you know, like there is that kind of moment where he's like, maybe it, we could, is this, is this a, is do we it? need that? Yeah. It's like, a, that comes yeah. up a lot, you know, and yeah. sometimes we decide we do, sometimes we decide we don't. I think it's just kind of in the moment thing, but uh, he's certainly not afraid of it. You well, know, clearly oh, from yeah. episode seven, yeah. he's not. Um, and because I have to ask you about her, because she's one of my favorite people, and just so I'm saying it, she promised to be on this podcast and hasn't yet. I um, thought I know. You got to work with say. Jamie Lee Curtis. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she's the best. She's I mean, the best. Yeah, right? I mean, how was that? And and by the way, like, how much fun to watch her play that character? Oh, it was insane. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, the, her. Some of the first, her first moments on set, like some of the first stuff that we shot was her in the kitchen, just like getting things ready. When she takes the butter just by her and hand. just scoops yeah. it in her hand and smears yeah. it on the bread. All, I think all of us looking at a monitor were like, okay, what's she doing? And she's doing that. Oh, <laughs> God. Is she going to do that every yeah. time? Well, and I mean, she is just a tremendous performer <laughs> and she is all in. And, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and I don't think I met Jamie Lee until like day five. I only met Donna Berzato <laughs> up until then. Up yeah. ready that's hilarious. <laughs> and then, by the yeah. way, when you meet her, you're like, you're the most amazing person. Oh, she's uh, yeah. the sweetest person, and she's like, yeah, you know, she's she's getting everybody gifts. She's giving yeah. baby books to crew members she just met because she's uh, like, yeah, you know she, what I mean? Awesome. Oh, you're having a baby? Oh, these yeah. are my favorites. Like, she's just the sweetest yeah. person. Uh, she, yeah, she's, she's great. Um, just so she can hear it. Does everybody in the audience want Jamie Lee Curtis on the... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> I'm not trying to put any pressure on you, Jamie. No, we actually, every once in a while, I contact her and she's like, I'm so sorry, I'm not available, but it'll happen eventually. <laughs> the, one, um, the one thing I will say to the, uh, the actors and just off of her as well is, is that like so much, I mean, I know we're a comedy, don't forget, it's comedy. <laughs> um, but it's so emotional and some of these things that these actors put themselves through for these performances is very personal and, you know, and the last thing you want is me right next to you while you're doing it. <laughs> yeah. And they're just like so comfortable in their 
in their profession and in their skill set that they like, you know, you, you're always kind of on that little, that line where it's like, am, you know, am I too close? Do you need me to blah, 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 blah yeah. whatever. And, you know, we're cross shooting a lot where it's like two sure. people talking and then the camera operator and a camera operator right next to them. And, you know, they're just so nice about like accommodating you as you accommodate them. And then like everybody starts to feel like everybody's a part of it. Yeah. And then I'm caught like doing a piece of coverage and then like looking out my left eye at Jamie Lee Curtis, who's right here, who's like right next to you. bawling her eyes out, telling some story. And you're just like, I don't know which one to watch. Yeah. Like that, you know? <laughs> and then you want to put your arm around. <laughs> um, I mean, do you think that do you think that you disappear to them or do you think that they use you? I I don't know. I think it's probably a little bit of both. Yeah. I, I think that so. we're kind of like a crutch at the same time as we are trying not to be there. Like we're there if they want us there, but we're, if they, if you know, we, we don't engage them unless they engage us kind sure. of thing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think it's more of just knowing that you're there for them, yep. but you're not there. You're not in their way, but you're there to help. I got one quick question and then we're probably going to have to wrap up. Um, you guys do manageable days. <laughs> You actually do insanely manageable days. What are your average hours like? I mean, this past season, I feel like we wrapped before or at lunch more often than we did. Yeah, for and, sure. And what do you... Uh, I did a six day where I didn't get 50 hours. Wow. I had, yeah. yeah, we had, I had, I think more than one check that was yeah. 40 hours and is or that less. Just, is like, that just because they're prepared and you're on top? I mean, what, like, you can't make a show on that. A lot of it... <laughs> I, I, you know, I think, you know, I, we talked about this a little bit earlier, but I think a lot of it comes from the top down. I think, you know, Chris, I think it helps, you know, having that producer, director, creator, you know, all in one person who's there to, to steer the ship. Yep. But he comes in unbelievably prepared and ready to work every single day. And like, he doesn't want to waste his own time. Nope. He will not waste anybody else's time. And he there is no one more for safety there's no what if we did a you know he's already gone and it's also like we don't need an over and a single and an over and a single and yeah an over we and don't need to hose this thing down i'm just going to tell the story yeah and i mean and, and you'll bring that stuff up and he'll go nope don't need it and you're like okay that's yeah, great and especially when you've got it's it's a it's a whole body thing yeah. you yeah. know when he's that prepared we're, we have to be that prepared. Like, you know, I'm in the first season, we, you know, as like the first and seconds and utility had a pre-call and nobody else did in our department. And it became very clear, very quickly that like Gary and Chris and Drew, every, we needed everybody there at least a half hour before because Chris was ready to go hit the ground an hour yeah. before yeah. you would be so hearing like the first not shot there, from the key grip. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And so, you know, we petitioned hard to get everybody there yeah. with a pre-call so that when call time hit, we could be shooting within 10 minutes yeah. and it, you know, and it, it all flows down like that. And so yeah. he's prepared. We need to be prepared. And it, yeah. and it makes a huge difference too, when you know, that there's the possibility of going home at lunch sure. when it's not like, Oh, Hey, we finished well, all our, we step, finished the call sheet. Why don't we pull up scenes from tomorrow? Yeah. yeah. There well, is none of that. Well, you and step I, up your game, right? Yeah. You're like, no, totally. we know what we're trying to do. We're making good stuff. We're going to do it in a manageable thing and have a life. And, and let's yeah. Go. And I, and, the, and just off of that, I think that you'll hear, I've heard Chris say it before. I know you have too, or it's like, I don't, we don't go fast so we can go home early. We go fast because the show's good. Yeah. It makes the show good. Yeah. And I think that that just comes from like, the every second counts kind of what what's what in the show is. what's in the kitchen yeah. i yeah. think that that you it's know great. comes into yeah. what we do as well so it is like hey you know like don't be don't be wasting anybody's time but the reason i bring it up is because i just want to put it out there it is possible to have a show that's incredible and a hit yep. and have a crew that's safe and has a life yeah <laughs> and it I, is <laughs> very much i think that's a good thing um, I could ask you guys questions for another hour, which I will afterwards, but um, I think we got to wrap it up. I'm going to uh, say a thank you and then leave you guys with, with a question that you can take us out on. Um, just want to thank um, CineCity Studios Chicago and, of course, Filmscape and, of course, our, our, um, our uh, folks here in the audience and our folks out there in the web. And uh, theop.io, check out Gary's breakdown. Check out all the Gary breakdowns. Send me emails on what you want to see, and we'll try to get it out there. Um, and, of course, the podcast on Apple and Spotify. Uh, I'll leave this with you guys. Maybe we'll go Gary first, and then, Matt, you can take us out. 
someone getting into the business now, you 20 years ago, something you wish you knew, how do you succeed in this business? What, what do you need to know? Oh, go ahead. Just that, just that. That's, yeah. <laughs> uh, you asked me not to say what I said last time. And I got to, re- I don't know if I remember what I <laughs> last said last time is time. Gary's podcast, which hasn't come out yet. So you can say that again. <laughs> um, I think for me at the end of the day, it's just like, it's, it is, it's work. That's kind of how I've always thought about it. And it's not like a career or a job or whatever. So like it never ends. The work never ends. So that I think is kind of the beauty of our business where it's just keep getting better. That, that I, mean, I think it just every day just get a little bit better than you were the day before. You know, learn something new. Get better at something you already knew. And if you just kind of take that attitude, you know, that just adds up after a while. And then people can see that, you know, you can be trusted. Yeah, I think my answer kind of dovetails in with that where, I I mean, I would say just, you know, you got to show up every day. You got to show up and be prepared and know what you're doing. And, you know, I'm always a a big proponent of just like gathering as much information as you can about the day so you can have answers when people are looking for them and, you know, know what you're moving on to next so you can be proactive or helpful when that moment comes. Um, cause I think, I don't know, speaking for myself, at least like, I remember that I remember, you know, the person who shows up and is like an active participant, um, as opposed to somebody who's just kind of like leaning back and, you know, aloof and appearing uninterested, even though they might be, but I think, yeah, you, you show up and, and engage. <laughs> All right. That's great. You guys have a good time? Cool. Oh, yeah. Thank you very much. Did you guys enjoy that? <laughs> All right. Yeah. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. That was great. That was fantastic. Thank you. We gotta, I think we've got everything we talked about. Yeah, right. You're happy?